So we're now moving on to um, petitions notified by councillors. Uh, there's been one councillor petition received for this meeting. Councillors are invited to speak for one minute. Uh, so, Zoe, would you like to present the pres uh, petition? Yeah. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, yeah, our petition on the Israel-Gaza conflict has been signed by 4,859 verified Bristol signatories, showing the strength of feeling of Bristol on this issue. The petition calls for an immediate ceasefire and lifting of the siege to end the humanitarian disaster in Gaza and for Bristol's political representatives to add their voices to this call and to push towards a just political settlement. Also, a minute silence at full council to commemorate all those killed in the atrocities and for City Hall to be lit up in Palestinian colours to express empathy for those who've lost their lives or been injured. It shouldn't require a petition to be brought for these things to happen. We're glad that a minute silence was held early, and thank you for that. We believe that the other petition request should not be controversial either, and we would like to ask all here to support this petition when it is debated on the 9th of January if the demands have not been acted already. Unfortunately, as a result of how the genocide in Gaza and our response to it has been treated by the National Labour Party and some of those in the local Labour group, I'm resigning from the Labour Party today. Free Palestine, free Gaza, ceasefire now. Thank you, Zoe. Okay, moving on to agenda item eight, uh, petition debate, Bristol's planning system. This petition has reached the 3,500 um, signatures threshold to qualify for a full council debate. 20 minutes is the maximum time limit allowed for this item. The petition organiser will be permitted up to five minutes to present the petition and its objectives. We will then proceed to the councillor debate. I will also ask the mayor or relevant cab cabinet member to respond at the end of the debate. As a reminder, this is not an interactive discussion involving the public. The issues raised in the petition and the comments of members during the debate will be referred to the mayor and the relevant cabinet member for a response. The petition organiser is Suzanne Audrey. Please, may I ask Suzanne to present the position, a petition? Right, thank you. Um, so, this petition, I'm watching people signing Christmas cards in front of me, but you are listening. Right? <laughs> um, this petition is about lack of confidence in Bristol's planning process. I've only got time to raise four broad issues and refer to some examples. I hope the Mayor and Councillors will also take public forum statements into account. The first concern relates to excessive lobbying and improper influence. When Mayor Rees accepted an all-expenses-paid trip to Kuala Lumpur from YTL in 2017 and then cancelled Bristol City Centre Arena, there were concerns about improper influence. And concerns about excessive lobbying have continued, particularly in relation to major sites. Recently, the Broadhawk scandal revealed collusion between the developer, the Mayor's Office and Development Control Committee Chair to overturn a unanimous decision to refuse planning permission. That, that was DCA. Um, party political interference is the second concern. The Local Government Association guidance is clear. Planning decisions must not be made on party political basis and the use of political whips to Thank influence you. the outcome. Uh, Suzanne, could I just pause you for a minute, uh, just as a point of order? Um, w what you've said about collusion can be taken as defamatory, so I would just advise you to choose your words carefully. You don't want to get yourself into, into trouble. No, uh, although I'll, I, I don't mind going to prison for saying that one. Um, <laughs> Um, the, the Local Government Association guidance is clear. Planning decisions must not be made on a party political basis, and the use of political whips to influence the outcome of a planning application amounts to maladministration. But observations of planning committee meetings suggest that some councillors are being influenced to vote on a predetermined party political basis. And party political behaviour was evident when councillors on Development Control Committee B announced recently, as a party group rather than as individuals, uh, that they would not be attending meetings. Next, the selective application of policies. 
The Urban Living Supplementary Planning document looked promising when it was first published, but it was immediately undermined when approval was granted for the tower block development at Totterdam Bridge, breaching the SPD. Similarly, the Mead Street development brief was undermined when the proposal for the former Bart Spices site was approved against the officer's recommendation. Policies relating to ecology and biodiversity are also subverted. Examples include the sale of Brislington Meadows to Homes England, permitting harm to the ancient hedgerow and site of nature conservation interest at Yew Tree Farm, and accepting dubious biodiversity net gain calculations. Much of this is justified as addressing the housing crisis, but the provision of truly affordable housing has been disappointing, and we should not undermine good planning policy in the name of getting stuff done. The fourth concern relates to misrepresentation and even bullying. Members of the public are being misrepresented and people with legitimate objections to development proposals are being characterized as anti-housing campaigners and self-styled environmentalists. And councillors are also being undermined. Some of this may be passed off as political banter, but it shouldn't be part of the planning process. And it seems to be becoming increasingly unpleasant. I was shocked when the cabinet member for housing delivery, supported by the mayor's office, seemed to be encouraging the anger of football fans against a councillor who asked that proposals for Bristol Rovers' new stand be considered by a planning committee. Surely Bristol deserves better. So in conclusion, I've briefly referred to four issues, excessive lobbying and improper influence, party political interference and predetermination, selective application of policies, misrepresentation and bullying. Thousands of people across the city are sufficiently worried to have signed the petition. I've, I've had quite a few emails and I haven't been able to include everything that people want in included in this statement. But I think now it's time to hear from councillors about how we can restore trust and confidence in Bristol's planning system. Thank you. Thank you, Suzanne. I'd like to uh, ask um, Councillor Stafford Thompson to speak on behalf of the Green Group. Hmm? Sorry, I haven't got my glasses on. I do apologise. That's right, because there's two trouble breaking towns ends over here. Um, okay, so Bristol's planning system is in disarray and dysfunctional, Lord Mayor. It's underfunded, under resourced, and undermined. Officers work hard, and they, but they're undermined by the administration and, the, and individuals working within it. We're losing officers faster than we can recruit them. And the increasingly hostile rhetoric means that we've made public comments anonymous to prevent harassment on the planning portal. Greens work to support good planning applications and development and we support community engagement and consultation that's meaningful and that listens to the concerns of communities. We support homes that are insulated, truly affordable, applications that meet our needs and future challenges in the face of an increasing climate and ecolog ecological emergency. And we know it's not an either or choice. Those Greens on planning committees carefully consider each application on the merits and the material planning considerations. Greens take their obligations seriously, they read applications and they make their own voting, voting choices, and unlike others, they vote accordingly. The Greens are famously unwhipped and Labour normally attack us for that too. We support the creation of homes, not investments, and we support the right homes in the right places. Applications for much needed affordable housing and social housing sit stuck for months. Small businesses are unable to erect shop signage, individual homeowners are unable to undertake home improvements. Developers appealing for non-determination results in approvals that don't benefit our city, and developers can, are unable to be sure they can meet their own targets due to delays in starting projects, which is in direct conflict with the Mayor's claims to get stuff done. Although you can get applications done if you're in six weeks, if you're the blue team. I have long held that um, development control committees are the demonstration of councillors working cross-party in a non-partisan manner, informed by their values. Legally, it's how regulatory committees work, that's how we should all be striving to work together for the benefit of our city and our residents. But DCA and DCB are clearly differently run, but they shouldn't be. It's not an easy task to hold off external um, interference um, in B, but, and also the administration should be supporting the efforts of a chair to ensure that we meet our regulatory obligations and robustly consider our applications. 
the administration should be working to improve the trust that the city has in the planning department, taking care of our planning officers, members of the public attending, and ensuring areas of concern are rectified. The administration should not be distracting from the situation, distracting with a set of allegations, uh, one for, distracting from one set of allegations by inventing and fabricating allegations as evidenced by eyewitnesses and video evidence to be untrue. Instead, attacking councillors who don't say yes without question. To be clear, this planning chair has never received any official complaints against them, although today shenanigans will probably be by fault by tomorrow. We should hold ourselves to higher account, and just like I do not condone intimidation of officers or councillors, we councillors must not intimidate others, especially diverse ones, from politics or for the public from engagement in democracy. In response to this petition, petition, the Green Council Group demands an apology to me as chair of DCB for most of the recent politically motivated allegations, and more importantly, an apology to the members of the public falsely accused of abuse, and most importantly... Can you wrap up, please, Annie? Thanks. Oh, well. Most importantly of all, we demand an apology to the people of Bristol for whom you've been elected to serve and have repeatedly let down every possible way, because Bristol deserves better. Thank you. Um, Councillor Renard, on behalf of the Labour Group. Thank you, Lord Mayor. We're here today to discuss a very important topic, how our planning system functions and how we all conduct ourselves within it. And we know there are challenges within the planning system, and it feels pertinent to start with setting out why we are where we are. And that's the impact of over a decade of austerity that has had on local government finances. Planning budgets have seen that impact, and the first things to go is often the backroom capacity, so that we can rightly protect frontline services. It's not lawyers, planners, transport officers that people are coming over the hill campaigning to protect resource around, and it has knock-on effects too, particularly for people in desperate need of a new home that are on our waiting list of over 20,000 households. Restrictive resources impact upon the pace of planning. They can impact on community engagement too, leaving some feeling frustrated about decisions that are taken at the development control committees. And as has been said at a recent scrutiny meeting, planning authorities across the country have been struggling for at least a decade in a system which is overcomplicated and under-resourced. It's also not produced enough planners coming out of university. It's about planning officers, it's about transport planners, it's about the drainage engineers, ecologists, urban designers, sustainability officers and others. We need all of those to ensure our system can function. We don't have enough of any of those either, and as a country, we haven't been training enough of those either. We do need to keep in focus the ever-growing housing crisis the country and the city faces. It's a reality that we need to build more homes, particularly homes that are genuinely affordable and for a social rent if we're truly to make inroads. And now I'm going to turn uh, to how people involved in the planning system conduct themselves as well. At the meeting at Development Control Committee B on 29th November, members of the committee and staff were subject to unacceptable behaviour. The incident, which is subject order, to an Lord ongoing Mayor. investigation, left members of the committee... Can we, can we stop, Tom, just for a second? Let's just hear this point of order. Tom, it would be really handy to not repeat unfounded allegations in this space. Please. There were yeah. video evidence from the video recording of the DCB, as shown on the Council's YouTube video, demonstrates there was nothing that happened within the meeting that was abusive, and nothing happened afterwards, as also demonstrated by eyewitnesses, and the video evidence has also surfaced. So please retract your remarks. This is the point of order, Chair. Okay, we, yeah, we, we, we're not going to debate whether things happened or not, really. I mean, it's... it's you have your uh, opinion on, on what happened. Uh, Tom has his. Let's listen. Hey, look, I'm, I'm entitled to my view, and we didn't interrupt you when you spoke. It's not an opinion, there, so. sorry. So. It is a point of order. What's an important point is that... Can, can we feel... stop jumping in, please, people? What's an important point is that councillors feel safe doing their jobs, and ultimately councillors on this bench, who are all women, didn't feel safe at DCB. And that can't be sidelined and it shouldn't be undermined and people shouldn't be under pressure to withdraw complaints or withdraw statements on the basis of how they felt that meeting was conducted. There hasn't been a complaint. Uh, now, this, this is not acceptable. Can we stop jumping in? There has been a complaint made. There has, because I've got copied into the email and going to the monitoring officer. So Come on, look. look. Well, then a this, this is getting I'd like to a child. Tim to actually confirm this, please, then, because I have not been notified. 
this is playground stuff. Can we just stop no, this? Not, no, because actually it's a, very, it's a very important issue of defamation that I'm being accused of something that I did not do and was not involved in and a member of the public did not do. And if there has been a complaint in which, incidentally, it is a confidential process, the complaints process, but I have not been notified by the monitoring officer of any complaint against me for a, an issue that happened allegedly two weeks ago. If it was a, something that happened... That would be a different matter, but you cannot fabricate incidents that did not happen and did not exist. My councillors did feel unsafe at the meeting. Can we, can we just say, and I've just conferred with our legal officer, anything about complaints will be dealt with confidentially and it should not be discussed really in this meeting and, and it, will be, uh, it will be decided by, by Tim at the end of the day. Right, c can we please just stop for a minute, OK? The attack was on me. It was on my religion. Is that going to be debated now? Power, with apologies, nobody. Like, like they've said, you. like they've said, it, it is going to be done confidentially. Except you. I'm not public. going to talk about this today. So let him. Hang on, uh, get, please, just one he person not, at a time. Not. Whether we felt safe or not, that's also been discussed, and it will be dealt with appropriately. All Tom has done today is to talk about the issues that are going on in that planning committee. This is not the first planning committee I've sat on, Annie. OK? How I felt that day, I'm not going to talk about it now, but how I felt that day, right, literally, we were shaking, OK? And I was going to walk out and just go through the back. No one was leaving the, no one was leaving the chambers that day. And I got attacked specifically to me, because no one else was a Muslim there. I know Councillor Amal was there, but she was quiet. She was sitting down. Nobody attacked the other, you, and I'm, the other, no, I'm very the sorry. The other members, I no. even offer them to give them a lift home because they okay. were too scared to walk out of here. But I don't want to go into the, I don't want to go into the details of it. Look, let's, let's, let's just, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't, this isn't a debate that we need to have in this meeting. You, you're talking about eyewitnesses. There, there is an eyewitness. So let's just agree to disagree and, and get on with this debate, please. Thank you. Tom, would Annie, you like you to continue? I was waiting for you to stop her. If Sorry, you, can we? You remember, you to stop we need to, we need to stop order, this if now. If you remember, if you actually paid attention, was there? As soon as the meeting closed, this is very important. As soon as the meeting closed, I got up and I cleared the chamber. I was clearing Tim. the chamber. Nobody had the chance to say anything. I absolutely you agree with that. I need that's not right. debate. Not but you did not stop right, her right, when she started going Come after on. me. We, we can't you have this kind of chamber. argument in the chamber. Stop it. This is this is you know. He said, she said. We can't do this and it's 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 not benefiting everybody else who wants to get on with the debate we've already had a major delay to this meeting councillor plowden what Can do I you have to point say of order, please yes which please is, i see nothing in the complaints procedure that says a complaint has to be confidential but on one hand, we're hearing that the complaint, any complaint should be kept confidential. Yet, we're not we're not debating here, the complaints about procedure complaints. here. We're debating planning. Can we just yes, get on the, with this? Can the, we let the, Councillor the speech, Renard please in, finish? I'm sorry, his... Lord Mayor, in, I'm going to say one more thing. In the speech, we've heard that the, you we've heard you say that the complaint should be kept confidential. Yet, in his speech, he has mentioned a complaint that is not reconciled. Can you stop now, please? I, I we are not say, debating complaints here. This is turning in, into some kind of playground now. Can we just stop? We're, we're, we're no better than w the behaviour that was happening earlier that caused us to, you know adjourned for an hour. So we, we need to stop this and just get on with this d debate. All these things can be taken up afterwards at the appropriate time and with the appropriate people. Tom, please. So I didn't have much more to, to go through, but ultimately we've taken the decision to withdraw from Development Control Committee B until further notice. We don't have confidence in how the meetings are being run. And we don't have confidence that the safety of our councillors at the current time, that there's enough in place. In order for councillors to carry out their democratic duties, the environment we operate in must be one where we feel safe and able to do that. The responsibility for that lies with all of us, and it especially sits with those who are chairing and attending meetings or in a particular position to influence the culture and the environment the de debate takes place in. We won't be withdrawing our statement. And I'm sure all in the chamber would agree due process needs to be followed. Safety concerns must be taken seriously, not sidelined. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Thank you, Tom. Councillor Weston. I love it when the Conservative stands up and he's not the controversial one. 
this is amazing. Um, thank you, thank you very much, my Lord Mayor. Oh, you want me to be controversial? You wait. It's coming later. Don't worry. Um, in regards to the petition, I'll talk to the petition if that's okay. First of all, congratulations on getting the wording. I don't fully share your view. I have confidence in aspects. I think our planning system and the way we do it isn't broken, but I do think it's bruised. And I think one of the problems that we've got is trying to understand the way that councillors work. Councillors on planning committees sit in a quasi-judicial capacity. They have a very, very hard job. When they have to weigh up what's come before them, they look at the legislation, they look at the planning frameworks, they look at the uh, representations, the officers' opinions, site visits, and all the rest of it, and then they have to make a decision based on their best judgment. And it's not hard, and actually, so it's not easy. And sometimes you have to make a decision which you don't like. You don't agree with it, but you have to make it nonetheless. And the classic example for me for this was actually years ago, showing how long I've been here, uh, when we had the incinerator and Avonmouth debate in 2009. The council en masse virtually didn't want it. We all voted no. And there were a couple of lone voices, including the chair of planning at the time, some said, you can't oppose it. The planning, it'll go through on appeal because every single piece of legislation says it's allowed. Sure enough, it went through on appeal and we lost a load of money fighting that appeal. You sometimes have to make that decision and it's a hard one. But of course, the public and ourselves would never make that decision if we had free option, but you still have to make it. And my hat goes off to councillors of all parties that struggle with the conflict between their own ideals and the legislation when they have to make that tough ask. But that does cause problems when the public want to see something different. The planning system as well is also bruised. We have a backlog, as we know, and it is enormous. Luckily, for those of us on growth and regen, we have scrutinised this. There are, I think it's seven new uh, planning apprentices coming in. There's another two in January. There are planning officers. It's never going to be as many as we would like, but the backlog is starting to go down, and that is good. The one thing I think we need to turn our eye to, and this is going to uh, planning chairs, planning colleagues, is when the issue comes to planning enforcement. All too often, when we deal with planning uh, applications, we talk about, oh, we can control that through condition. Well, you can, so long as there's an enforcement officer able to go and check the condition and carry out work if the condition is breached. So I think what we're going to need to do is, as the backlog comes down, and the plan is obviously to get to a manageable and sustainable level, and Councillor Ribbentune, you were there during that meeting, is rather than pull resource at that point out of planning once it's hit the equilibrium, look at remobilising that divorce into that enforcement function. Because actually, if we're not controlling the conditions of planning commission... Can you just wrap, the wrap up? I am, yep. Yeah, uh, ...conditions, then actually that will undermine confidence in our ability to control that planning process. So thank you very much, my Lord Mayor. I'd say bruised, not broken. And I'm not controversial yet. <laughs> OK, uh, on behalf of the Liberal Democrat group, it's um, Councillor Classic. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, so first off, I would like to thank uh, Suzanne for uh, bringing this petition here today. It's clear that something needs to be done as a council to address the loss of confidence in the planning department that is currently being felt by residents in Bristol. It seems the essence of concern for residents is the belief that the planning system as it stands is failing to de deliver an effective impartial service. They have witnessed a lack of consistency in the application of planning considerations and policies. It is crucial to acknowledge that the challenges faced by Bristol City Council's planning system extend beyond the city borders. National shortages in planning, planners and planning staff have undoubtedly contributed to the difficulties faced by our local authorities, as well as a lack of resources within the department hindering our ability to attract top talent with competitive officers. Um, and this is doing the whole um, department a huge disservice. The burden on these professionals is immense and is evidence that they are grappling with limited resources. Um, the petition rightly identifies examples where crucial planning considerations are given inadequate weight or where inconsistencies in their application prevails. Concerns related to loss of light, overshadowing privacy, design and appearance um, and more are valid and deserve serious attention. The Chamber should reflect upon the harm caused when residents lose confidence in the impartiality of planning decisions. The repercussions are significant, potentially resulting in long-term, if not irreparable, harm to our neighbourhoods. Let us not forget that the challenges faced by our planning system are not isolated but are part of a broader national issue, but we do need greater accountability and improvement on the local level. 
Let us also advocate for increased resources and comprehensive planning reforms on the national stage. Together, let us work, work towards a city where planning decisions are transparent, consistent and made with the long-term well-being of, of Bristol at heart. This petition debate is not just about identifying problems, but is a collective plea for constructive and sustainable solutions that will shape the future of our city. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I'd now like to call uh, Councillor Hopkins to speak on behalf of the Knoll Community Party. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Yes, I recognise uh, the shortage of staff and the problems that actually causes in the, that uh, planning applications are not being dealt with as speedily as they should be. It also means that planning officers are under pressure, and I've witnessed myself where they've come under undue and un unfair pressure from pressure groups outside this council that have treated them very badly indeed, and that's a matter of concern. I <laughs> listened to the list of examples that uh, Suzanne uh, gave. The Brislington Meadows, well, I mean, quite frankly, that was a, 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 a breakdown of trust not of the planning system, because in actual fact, it was, land was assembled and sold off by this council for development. It wasn't the planning uh, uh, system that did that. We have a good local plan, which we all agreed the other day, that pre presents the right sort of system of doing things. I'm very glad I wasn't on the burial ground uh, versus farm uh, planning committee because I wouldn't have wanted to be in involved in that. And I'm very glad I'm not a member of a planning committee when you see what actually can happen. The one qu query I re really have over planning decisions in the city was the development on the Bath Road known as the Boatyard, which quite frankly seems to be the wrong building in the wrong place, built in the wrong way. That's very strange. I'd love detailed explanations of that. I speak about Broadwalk Shopping Centre. We've had lots of noise from residents complaining about this, and people are not residents of our ward. And the one thing that everyone in this chamber needs to know is that the majority of residents in Knoll actually want the development to go ahead yeah. as planned and applied for. And that is very clear. Unfortunately, some people who actually have a very entrenched point of view decided that they weren't allowed that to happen, and they're about to actually take a legal challenge which could delay things for a considerable period of time. How is that democratic? Which is what I'm asked by the people in our ward who want their shopping centre back. They want the redevelopment, and they're very annoyed about uh, barriers being stuck in the way of it actually happening. I, I appreciate that the way that the decision came about did not look good. Uh, and I'm, I, I would suggest that that's because there was some people who made or about or made or about to make an unwise decision in the first meeting and then had a very good think about it and I'm very glad that they did because quite frankly you know without that development we are left with a, a derelict shopping center and a lot of people are left without the facilities that they desperately need and let's face it what is planning for in the long term it's actually there to give a better quality of life to the people in our city and to look after what they actually want thank you very much Thank you, Gary. Okay, that's the end of the debate. Um, uh, Rhys, would you like to respond? Uh, I'm going to shorten it because I, I did have um, a few things to say, but I, I just want to say, Lord Mayor, I just think some of the things uh, said in that debate were outrageous. Um, I think the way the debate was uh, and people participated in it were outrageous, dismissing the very lived experience of someone in this chamber who's citing uh, feelings of fear, citing uh, something that touches on, and I'll, I use that as an understatement, uh, racial and religious um, issues, hate crime, whatever we want to say, to dismiss that is outrageous. Um, and if we are going to uh, offer an example to the city that is better than the one we saw earlier on, you know, it's no point just saying it and come out with these grand statements and, you know, sitting in positions of respect and expecting, you know, the, the system to roll around. Because, you know, it needs to be modelled. Um, and it was, you know, it was appalling. And, and we really must do better. Um, as for the city's future, you know, the city needs to be politically led. Uh, we need to make decisions about the city, not just 
have the city land upon us because there are very specific things we need to get ahead of, particularly on the nature of urbanisation, the kind of homes we build, where we build them, you know, our track record on decarbonisation, protecting nature, tackling inequalities and all the rest of it. And we make no apology for being involved in shaping the city's future. Thank you. I now ask Council to note the issues raised in the petition, together with the comments of members joining the debate at this meeting. This matter will now be referred to the Mayor and relevant Cabinet member for consideration and to issue a response to the petition organiser.